as the designee of the majority leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker Pro Tem. Um, I don't know if I can top a Panetta's, um, my friend from California's great white shark attack, um, or talking about airline delays, but we're going to do something that's particularly amusing and fun. We're going to talk about why the fiscal house of the United States is collapsing. Um, and for a number of folks who've watched my floor presentations, a lot of this is going to be familiar. This is a primer particularly for our new members. Right now we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of new staff with the new members here in the House of Representatives and hopefully on the thousand some televisions around the campus where you have C-SPAN on, please, if you actually are interested, if you really want to understand how much trouble we're in, Give me, a, give me a few minutes of your time. Well, actually, give me almost an hour of your time. Um, let's sort of walk through the reality. I'm going to walk through some of the solutions that are absolutely wrong. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the reality of the math. And the punchline we're going to come back to multiple times is really simple. The primary driver of U.S. sovereign debt is our demographics. Those of us who are baby boomers, we got old. And the political class here, unless we're willing to tell the truth, there is no path to saving us from a failed bond auction, a failed debt crisis, a world where we all live dramatically poor. And it doesn't have to be that way. And, and look, I know I'm a broken record, but damn it, somehow we got to get this to start to sink in. So let's actually walk through some of the reality. Um, I always start with this chart because it's just easy to get your head around. This is 2022. Now, the funny thing is, it looks like 2023, the percentage that is mandatory, that means it's on autopilot. Your members here, people like me, we won't vote on it. This is Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, these things that are a formula. This percentage actually went down in the, it looks like it's going down in this budget year. It's not going down because we're spending less money. It's because we're spending so much more money on discretionary, it actually took several points more of the percentage of spending. Now, a lot of that was one-time spending, will fade back down, but you got to get your head around. The majority, the vast majority of U.S. spending is what we call mandatory. It's entitlements. It's you get because you work so many quarters it's because you turned a certain age, because you're a certain tribal group, because you're a certain level of poverty. You get these benefits, and they're automatic. It's a formula. And then over here, you see this little green part? That's discretionary. That's what we call non-defense discretionary. This is what everyone thinks of as government. That's your foreign aid. That's your FBI. That's the IRS. That's all those things. And here, the blue. That's defense. And you're going to see, I'm going to show you in some charts later, you know, my brothers and sisters on the left will throw, often throw out rhetoric of, cut it defense, get rid of it. Believe it or not, it's not even enough money to keep us in balance. You can get rid of every dime of defense. There needs to be an understanding of reality. Your government is an insurance company with an army. And I know that sounds uh, trying to be somewhat humorous, but it happens to be the truth. Think of it that way. So what's the primary drive if I came to you right now and said, you're a new member of Congress. You've made a passionate pitch to your voters that you're going to take on the deficit. OK, did you stand in front of your voters and tell them over the next 30 years, 100 percent of the deficit? is Medicare and Social Security. The rest of the budget, according to the Congressional Budget Office, actually has a positive balance. Over the next 30 years, and this is based on the 22 numbers, with inflation, some of this is actually worse today. And we're not going to get the updated numbers till probably mid-February using the Congressional Budget Office. Functionally, Medicare, the shortfall in Medicare is about 75% of all of our borrowing. The shortfall in Social Security, and the reason you put that on there, understand, 
look at the Social Security actuary report. It's not Republican, it's not Democrat. These are people that actually own calculators. With the COLA that was just given, you lost almost a full year of life. So there's this trust fund. Yes, it's Social Security money that we've paid in over the years. It's then loaned to the Treasury. The Treasury gives special, think of this, I, um, special Social Security T-bills. And then when the Social Security needs money, they cash them in with Treasury. Fine. And then actually, the Treasury goes out and borrows other money. That money runs out in about 10 years. Two years ago, I believe, the Social Security Actuary Report said when the trust fund runs out, our brothers and sisters who are 65 and older, or who are actually 62 and older, or whoever are just taking a Social Security check, will get about a 27% cut. Um, I think last year's Actuary Report said about a 25% cut. It's based on, here's our projection of the revenues, the FICA taxes we take in today, and then it goes out the door. There's some data out there that says 10 years from now, unless we fix Social Security, you're going to double poverty among seniors. What's the moral aspect there? How many of this body are ready to actually deal with the political nightmare cascade of the trolls who lie, oh, excuse me, the politicians, trying to tell the truth about a multi, 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 multi trillion dollar system that's out of money and what the negative shortfall. You do understand, I think the model said like in the next 60 years, 65 years, it's like $212 trillion short. And that's just the Social Security Trust Fund. And it is gone in about 10 years. It lost almost a full year of actuarial life with this year's COLA. These are the things that we're here to fix instead of the trite crap we come behind these microphones and talk about, these are the things that destroy a society because it breaks our promises. And how about, yes, I don't laugh at me. My wife and I are both 60 and I have a six month old. We adopted another child. When my six month old is 25 years old, two things, we either blow up the debt and deficit, which we're probably gonna do that too, or double the U.S. taxes. When he's 25 years old, we have to double corporate taxes, import fees, tariffs, everything else, every, for, every what we call receipt. We got to double. It means top marginal rates like 70 some percent. That's just the federal. Do you understand what these numbers mean? This was based that we have $114 trillion of borrowing in today's dollars. And these calcs were done before this inflationary cycle. This is what takes down a republic. How serious is this body really about telling the truth about the math? So let's actually walk through the fragility. And once again, I'm doing this substantially for the new members and the new staff here to understand what reality is. All day long, you are going to get pitched with people with shiny objects or I need you to regulate this so I don't get competition in my business in the home district. I want some free money. I want you to give me a grant. We get this inbound all day long. We get the crazy conspiracy theory that has nothing to do with reality. And that consumes our time instead of thinking about this math and coming up with actual solutions. And we've come to this floor over and over and over with solutions. Except it terrifies, it seems to terrify our brothers and sisters here because it means A, telling the truth about the math, and then it means we gotta do things really differently. You gotta legalize technology, you gotta legalize the disruption because it's not about changing who pays. Before I do this, let's let, see if I can explain this. For my fans on the left who love Obamacare, the ACA, understand it's a financing bill. It just moves the money around. I get subsidized over here, but this group has to pay. The re brilliant Republican alternative was a financing bill. Now, we actually did a more elegant job of spreading it along the curve, so you got some efficiencies, but it was still a financing bill. It's who had to pay and who got subsidized. Medicare for all is a financing bill. 
It strips at this pace. None of those ideas in regards to health care change what we pay. They just move around who pays. Until the conversation becomes about what we pay, you can't save us. Because the debt doesn't change. And, and, and on my very last board, I'm going to do something that's a little cranky and a little mean. I'm going to make fun of some of my own work. But I'm going to tell the truth that a lot of times when we talk 10 years to balance, you do realize one of the things we're doing is saying we're going to take this portion of the spending and we're just going to give it back to the state. We're going to take this portion of spending and, and make the users of Medicare or users of this group or this that. We're going to make the individuals pay, but we're going to take it off the federal books, but we don't change the spending as you would do the calculation as a percentage of the gross national product, the GDP, or gross domestic product. And, and that's what's so important here. Unless we legalize the disruption and do this quickly. I, I had a meeting earlier in my office today with someone that's really smart, who's been here for, for a long time. He's a medical doctor. He's one of my favorite members. David, you got to go slower. People aren't going to embrace it. The bureaucracy is going to fight you. Do you know how many vested interests there are in the lobbyist class and down in K Street? Why, we're watching the numbers erode. I'm going to show you a slide here that structurally, 10 years from now, we may have a structural $2 trillion a year deficit. That's the structural deficit. And half that will be just interest. Is this body ready to tell the truth about the math? because the math will always win. And, and one of the other things that terrifies me here is we're not telling the truth about the fragility of interest rates. Take a look, and I'm gonna do two or three slides here, but you start to look what happens if interest rates are up. So rising interest rates could push up the national debt towards 300%. So get this, if the mean interest is three points over what CBO projected last year, which, believe it or not, is actually closer to the mean of interest we had paid over the last 30 years. So we go back to what was normal for the last 30 years. You're at 345 percent of debt to GDP. It's all gone. If you care about the poor, there's no more money for them. You care about defense, there's no more money. We're basically, every dime is just covering interest. Government is gone. The fantasy that goes on around here of, let's talk about shiny objects, but avoid the real crisis ahead of us. And I'm going to show a bunch of slides that the Democrats' proposals of raising taxes doesn't work, and a bunch of the Republican ideas of, let's get rid of waste and fraud, we'll get rid of foreign aid. Do you realize every dime of foreign aid covers about 12 days of borrowing? Last year, we borrowed $43,600 a second. And how much of the conversation here is about my little Matthew, who's six months old? What's his future like? Does, does anyone here give a damn about your kids, your grandkids, your own retirement? This is everything. This will take us down. Will this body take it seriously? And you start to look at the charts. This is where we're at right now. Understand, the CBO model is now starting to look at that 10 years from now, 2032, does that may seem like forever, but it's 10 years. What were you doing 10 years ago? Do you remember? It wasn't that long ago. We're heading towards a structural cost just of a trillion dollars just on interest. Just the interest cost. Now add on another trillion dollars in spending. And remember, in that 10 years, just Medicare and its portion of Medicaid go up $1.1 trillion. The total budget 10 years from now goes up, I think, just a little less than the, the CBO model from a year ago was about $2 trillion. We're spending more. We take in about a half a trillion more plus on due tax receipts. It basically means you're heading towards a structural deficit close to $2 trillion a year. And that's the baseline. 
Now, how many of you ran for office here and said, I'm going to balance the budget? Okay. Your structural deficit 10 years from now is $2 trillion. What are you about to do? I'm just going to move it to the states and let them pay for it. I'm going to play a shell game. I'm going to tell my voters it's wasted. I'm going to tell my voters I need to tax businesses more. We got old. I'm sorry. But go back to that second slide. Every dime, every dime of the borrowing for the next 30 years is three quarters Medicare, one quarter Social Security. And, that I, I, and you look at the comments that will be on the video of this, and people say, oh, that's not true. Get rid of Ukraine. Fine. Strip it. But you just got rid of 12 days, 14 days of borrowing. There's this lack of ability to do math here. But I'm glad everyone gets their feelings satiated. And you got to understand, this is the baseline we're at right now. The baseline. 30 years from now, half of all tax receipts go just to interest. And, and in ways and means, we call it tax receipts, tax revenues, whatever you want to call it. Half of it. And there's a model out there that if we're two points higher than the CBO model, in 30 years, it actually comes in closer to 25 years, all receipts, if we kept the same tax code, so, so all the things expire, all the tax reforms, go, we go back to the bad old days, and, and, and we have two point higher interest rates. So that's still lower than the previous 30 year mean. Two points. Every dime of tax receipts in about 25, 28 years, every dime goes just to cover interest. There's no more government. We're nothing more than a bond house paying out interest. Does anyone here understand this? Does, does, doesn't this make anyone nervous? Am I the only idiot getting up here and trying to point out saying this is going to fall off the cliff? Does anyone else care? This is the stuff that's real.